not just pastors, but it's a requirement for pastors. I've taken a lot of criticism over the years. I've had many, many a pastor tell me I have no business in the pulpit. I'm in the wrong place. Talk to my boss. <laughs> I answer to him, not to you. You take care of yours, I'll take care of mine. Okay. And when we stand before the Lord to give account for things, we'll see how it all turns out then. That verse goes on and says, Less being lifted up with pride, not a novice, less being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. <laughs> now I know when I was called, and I've said this before in my own testimony to folks, that I suddenly I thought I was some kind of a big deal because I'd been called to preach and I became very puffed up and I became very prideful. God said, oh no, this ain't going to do. <laughs> and he went immediately to work doing what was necessary to knock the stuffing out of me. And to knock the legs out from underneath me. And I'm going to tell you, the Lord knows how to deal with pride. Okay, and the only thing, the only thing that kept me out of the office of pastor for as many years as it did was my own arrogant, stinking pride. I was the one that had to force God to deal with me as sharply and as harshly as he did in order to break my will and to break my pride and make me usable. Me, my fault, nobody else's. And I thank God he did it every day. I thank God for it. I am so thankful God never gave up on me. You know why? Romans 11, 29. Romans 11. This is one of my one of my life's verses, Romans eleven twenty nine, where the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. You think God didn't know who I was and what I was like and how I was going to behave and how things were going to go? There were no surprises to God, not at all. And yet He still. <laughs> whatever reason, God's wisdom chose me to fulfill the office of a pastor. No, no, you're not getting out. <laughs> you're going to do what I called you to do. Okay? And the same thing goes for each one of you in your lives. Whatever it is that God's called you to, wherever it is that God's placed you within the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will fulfill it. You're going to see to it. You fulfill it. Whatever it takes. And I'm going to tell you, that's a scary thing. And Lord, whatever it takes. Because God will do whatever it takes. You go through the Bible and you look at what God has done in people's lives. You look at the stories of people's lives and their testimonies and some of the things that God has done in people's lives to bring them to the point to where... He can use them, and He's going to get the glory out of their lives. It ought to make you shudder. And it ought to make you say to yourself, okay, uh, let, let's, let's take the easy path here, and I'll be, I'll be compliant, and I'll be pliable, and I'll be obedient, and I'll do whatever you ask, because I know you'll do whatever it takes. All right, we're going to stop there for tonight. We'll finish that up. Lord willing, next Wednesday we'll come to that verse 7, the last verse in that. <coughs> there. Verse 7.
where he says, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. We'll spend a little time with that one, and then we will, Lord willing, move into likewise must the deacons. And boy, that's going to be another place where I break company with a great many pastors and a great many churches. Deacons. Deacons. All right. Anybody got any questions for me? Any verses you would like me to repeat for you or any comments you'd like to make at all about the topic this evening? All right, then. We'll stop there for tonight. Father, thank you for your word and for your truth. And again, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor being a pastor, because that's what it is. It's very much a privilege. And it's very much an honor. But it is also a position of great responsibility. And one not to be taken lightly. And so Lord, I pray, help me to fulfill my place. Bless us now, Lord, as we go our separate ways. Keep us safe, Lord, as we travel out there on the roads this evening. Get us safely to our homes. Let us remember, Lord, we're going to a nice, safe, comfortable, warm, dry homes. There's going to be folks tonight that are going to lose that. There are going to be folks, Lord, in the morning whose homes are going to be gone, whose livelihood is going to be gone. Some of them, their loved ones, will be gone. Let us pray with thanksgiving and pray, Lord, for them and what they're about to endure. And we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.